6.38. A famous Aesop's fable about a crow with a knowledge of physics appears to be more than just folklore. Yes, in the tale, written more than 2,000 years ago, you probably remember it, a crow uses uh, stones to raise the water level in a pitcher so it can quench its thirst. We can see one of them actually doing this in one of these uh, experiments. There he is, popping the stones in, and the idea is, if you haven't grasped it already, that the water comes up and then, if something's in it, the bird can then actually reach it. Yeah, I mean, the point is that scientists have actually uh, investigated and shown that they do do exactly that, as described in the fable when presented with a similar situation. They even chose bigger stones to get the job done quicker. Chris Bird, yes, that's his name, is the Cambridge University zoologist who carried out the experiments. Hi there. Very good morning to you. Can't resist that, can we? No. Chris Bird. Uh, what was it about the, uh, the birds or the fable that got you to investigate? Well, we basically know that um, the corvids, the crow family, um, are, are able to use tools. Um, and we wanted to, to see whether Aesop's fable was actually something which they could do. Um, there was a report in the early 80s about some rooks using a plug in their aviary to form a pool of water during dry periods and then drinking and bathing in that water. So it, it seemed to be something which wasn't beyond their capabilities. Mm -hmm. So we, we gave them this test to look at whether they could actually solve a task that was analogous to Aesop's fable. OK, so we're, we're, we're looking at the pictures now. Um, tell us what's happening. So basically, um, this is a rook, a member of the, the crow family. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see um, there's a, a tube on the left which contains water and a tube on the right that contains sawdust. That's just a control. Um, and the, the bird is using um, stones and dropping them into the water to raise the water level up. And on the surface of the water, there's a worm floating. So by dropping the stones into the tube, the water level will raise up and the worm will get in uh, within reach of the bird's beak. Mm. And is this the first time, as far as you know, that uh, an Aesop's fable has been scientifically tested? It is, yeah, definitely. This is the first time that any species has been shown to actually be able to do this, which is it's quite remarkable, um, particularly for a bird. You know, a bird has a brain about the size of a walnut, and they're doing some things which are quite comparable to the great apes. Yeah. Um, the only other similar task was performed by an orangutan that uh, had a similar tube with a peanut in the bottom and the orangutan got a mouthful of water and spat the water into the tube to raise the peanut up. So the two species seem to be solving sort of similar tasks and it's quite interesting to see how they're solving the tasks and compare their levels, levels of intelligence. Mm. Because Aesop of course used lots of animals to come up with his fables and they were sort of metaphors for human behaviour and moralistic tales but he seemed to have struck the right note with this one. Yeah certainly Aesop's moral in this case was necessity is the mother of invention um, and this fits quite nicely because rooks don't appear to use tools in the wild. Um, and that's not because they can't, it's because they don't have the motivation in the world. They, they have don't access. Need to. Exactly, they have all sorts of easy access foods um, like uh, roadkill, like they're, they're, that's their kind of fast food. So, when given the opportunity and the motivation to use tools and solve these problems, they show that they are really able to do so. Brilliant, Chris Bird. Lovely to talk to you about that. Thanks very much indeed for coming in. Thank you.